I'd like to ask everybody to please stand as we welcome the Brockton Firefighters Pipes and Drums. Forward! Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Present! Up! I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order! Up! Please be seated. Down. On behalf of the Brockton Firefighters Local 144, I would like to welcome you to the 77th anniversary of the Strand Theater Fire that claimed 13 Brockton firefighters and left many of their brothers deeply affected both physically and emotionally from that night on March 10th, 1941. As we do for all our brothers and sisters in the fire service who die on the line of duty and make the ultimate, ultimate sacrifice we never forget. On this date, each and every year, we join here and gather only blocks away from where these firefighters were killed. When we built the memorial outside years ago, there was a bunch of us that did a lot of research and reading through old Enterprise articles. And one of the things that hit me personally was the families that were lost behind. There were sons that lost their father, wives that lost their husbands. And the thought of what was going to happen the days after the wakes and funerals. Right on Warren Ave, Firefighter Murphy had his wake right inside the house. And it kind of brings back to how we have to take care of the families and those left behind after a tragic event like that. And in the fire service, we've been groomed to make sure that we never forget and we never leave anybody behind. So in that vein, I, I was asked like last year, someone said to me, they said, how long are you guys gonna keep doing the strand? And I was like, forever. And it kind of baffled me why someone would think that. And you know, because it was so many years in the past. And we made a commitment the year that this happened that we would take care of the families and never forget and we'll always continue that. So with that, I'd like to continue the ceremony and thank everybody who's here today. I'd like to especially thank the family members of those firefighters that were killed on March 10th that are here today, as well as the members of those families of the firefighters that were severely injured. As some might not know, there were firefighters that were in the hospital for over a year, and there were a lot that suffered tragic mental difficulties long after this fire. Uh, I would also like to thank Mayor Bill Carpenter for being here today, Fire Chief Mike Williams, President of the Professional Firefighters of Massachusetts, Rich McKinnon, Secretary Treasurer of the, uh, the uh, Professional Firefighters, Billy Cabral, Retired Fire Chief Kenneth Galligan, Retired Fire Chief Richie Francis. I'd like to also welcome District Vice President, the Professional Firefighters of Massachusetts, James Brown. Also like to welcome retired firefighter and former president of Local 144, Billy Paolo. 
I'd also like to remember Archie Gormley, who is not here today with us. Um, he's on the mend. I don't think he's missed uh, Strand Memorial since he's been on the job. I know he's here with us in spirit, and I know I definitely miss him. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, City Council President Dennis Iannieri for being here today, uh, Ward 6 Councilor Jack Lally, our State House Delegation Senator Mike Brady, Representative Michelle Dubois, and State Representative Jerry Cassidy. I did get a call from Claire Cronin this morning. Uh, she's very ill, so uh, she wasn't able to make it today. And I'd also like to thank uh, Brockton Community TV and Jay Miller and his crew for filming this as they do every year. And I want to thank the, uh, the DPW and the uh, drill school guys coming out this morning and clearing out all the snow so we can do our ceremony out there this morning. Thanks, guys. With that, I'd now like to invite Mayor Bill Carpenter for a few words. Hooray! Rest! Well, good morning, uh, everyone, and welcome to Brockton City Hall. Welcome to our... Uh, our ceremony this morning, remembering those who perished 77 years ago, and I couldn't agree with Bill Moore that uh, it's been 77 years, they're not forgotten now, they never will be forgotten. Uh, the, the Strand Theater fire and the toll that it took um, is a big part of our city's history, it's part of who we are, it's part of the fabric of the city. Uh, but it is critically important that we not forget, and I cause to think about that yesterday as I had some well first I think about World War II because it's kind of in the same era as World War II and the fact that there are so few left now uh, World War II veterans and that how the first generation after them I certainly know about my father's service in World War II uh, but and he's had the opportunity to teach his gen grandchildren but we're now two generations removed and we're two generations removed from the Strand Theater fire now. And I think there's, uh, I think we all carry a tremendous amount of responsibility to make sure that young people who are growing up in this city know the history of this city and know about the Strand Theater fire. Uh, and uh, I had some young people in my office yesterday, high school students, great outstanding young students, but knowing I had the ceremony today, I asked them what they knew about the Strand Theater fire uh, and they all turned around and looked at each other. And I said, wow, we are, we've got some work to do uh, because we've, we've got to be teaching young people who grew up in this uh, city the history, uh, but also, you know, the, the Strand Theater fire. We, we've got to be passing that on to the next generation. Um, this is an opportunity for me each year to use this uh, commemoration of the price that was paid 77 years ago as an opportunity for me to express uh, my respect and my gratitude to all the first responders in the city, firefighters, uh, police, and EMS. Um, I think that until I had an opportunity to sit where I sit today, I never fully appreciated uh, what the firefighters and the other first responders do for us. And the game has certainly changed a lot since uh, 1941 in terms of what firefighters do and respond to on a daily basis. It's a lot more than just fighting fires nowadays. You know, everything from hazmat to drug overdoses, but the mission hasn't changed, saving lives. The mission hasn't changed, but the game has. And once in a while, there'll be some big event uh, that makes the front page of the newspaper, makes the news, and may cause some folks to pause and think about what they do for us daily. Uh, but I will tell you that I have an opportunity to see it every day firsthand. And uh, acts of bravery and acts of heroism occur regularly. You just don't hear about them all the time. Uh, but I do truly appreciate what, uh, what they do for us. And I do also think that remembering the Strand Theater fire uh, is important as to how it ties into who the city of Brockton is and what we are. Um, it was just a week ago at this time that you know we had a storm hitting us and within a few hours of this time of the day we had trees and wires coming down all over the city extremely hazardous conditions and we had firefighters responding to those down wires and trees into houses and everything else all over the city tirelessly 
for hours and hours and hours. And so it's events like that that remind me how much we rely upon them. But I think when I look at the Strand Theater fire and the, the price that was paid by the entire city, and as Bill said, the, the families of those who were lost, the families of those who were injured, the friends and loved ones of those that were injured and lost, it took a tremendous toll on the city, uh, but it also speaks to the resiliency of the city, because Brockton's a tough city. And uh, we get knocked down once in a while, but we always bounce back. And Brockton bounced back from the Strand Theater fire, despite the events of that day. And I think as I was, so I, I read the Jim Benson book since it came out last year about the fire, because I wanted to know more about it. And I'm just going to share one passage with you, because this is one piece that really, really stuck with me. So the book talk, is talking about the 13 who were lost, 35 or so injured, um, and the extent of many of the injuries. As Bill said, many suffered for years after the fire. But this is what really, and I guess this is maybe my mayor perspective, but Four days after the fire on March 14th, in addition to those who died, 16 firefighters were unable to report to duty. However, according to the Brockton Enterprise, many worked despite their injuries and against doctor's orders, including, and then it lists 10 firefighters, Walter McLaren, William Hogan, Lawrence Johnson, Lieutenant Fred Papineau, Cornelius Burke, John Kelly, Captain Charles McCarthy, Eric Nordine, Oswald Kuplast, and Frank Cameron. These firefighters had serious injuries from back injuries, hip injuries, shoulder injuries. And I looked at that and I said, those, those 10 firefighters reported to work when they were told not to by their doctors, when they didn't have to, uh, but because out of their uh, sense of duty to the city. And so when I saw that, my, my first thought as mayor when I saw that was I'm assuming local 144 was not in existence yet, because uh, I don't think that <laughs> they would have gone along with that. Um, but it, it really is a testament to the dedication and the commitment that our firefighters and our first responders have to the city that these 10 men, despite serious injuries, still showed up at the station and reported for duty. And uh, that, that's one of the big takeaways for me for the Strand Theater Fire. So uh, to the firefighters and all the first responders, thank you for what you do. We will remember, we will never forget those that were lost 77 years ago. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. It's nice to have a mayor who appreciates the hard work that we do. And just for the record, uh, this year our local will be 100 years old. So maybe their rep didn't get to them before. Uh, with that, I'd like. Must have been off that day. Yeah, he, uh, he was still in school. Uh, now I'd like to invite uh, the chief of the Brockton Fire Department, Mike Williams. Good morning. Mayor Carpenter, elected officials, Reverend McCoy, Brockton Police and Fire Department Honor Guards, Brockton Firefighters Pipes and Drums, department members, both current and retired, families of our departed brothers and friends. I would like to thank you for joining us here this morning for this the 77th anniversary memorial ceremony for the 13 Brockton firefighters who lost their lives in the Strand Theater Fire on March 10, 1941. In the early morning hours of that day, a fire had broken out in the boiler room of the Strand Theater. Firefighters were summoned and arrived to battle what appeared to be an average basement fire. It was later discovered that the fire had entered the walls and had burned its way to the void space between the ceiling and the roof of the theater. Firefighters were sent to the balcony area to open the walls and ceiling and extinguish the fire. At approximately 1.45 a.m., the unthinkable happened. The entire roof collapsed, 
killing 12 firefighters instantly and injured 22 others, one of which succumbed to his injuries days later. A fire chief's biggest fear in holding that position is the unimaginable thought of a line of duty death of even one of his firefighters. To be faced with 13, for me, is almost inconceivable. My heart truly goes out to Chief Dickinson, Chief of Department at the time, for having to tell 13 families that their loved one would not be coming home. This tragedy made 13 wives widows and 26 children fatherless. Not to mention broke the hearts of our entire city. Last year in the United States, we lost 93 firefighters in the line of duty, two here in Massachusetts. In only one case were there multiple deaths, that being the loss of two firefighters in Mississippi. So you can imagine how devastating losing 13 must have been. Prior to September 11, 2001, the Strand Theater fire was the greatest loss of firefighters' lives in our nation's history. These facts should remind firefighters everywhere, no matter your age, time on the job, experience level or title, the importance of training, education, and safety in our chosen profession is truly paramount. Never let your guard down. Stay focused and always be prepared. In closing, I ask, may God continue to bless the souls of our 13 brothers lost 77 years ago tomorrow. May he continue to bless their families and may he always watch over firefighters, police officers, and EMS personnel everywhere. Thank you. In your prayers, I ask that you remember those serving in our armed forces around the globe, those that have given the ultimate sacrifice. Also remember our brother and sister firefighters, police officers, emergency medical personnel, and especially remember the following 13 members that lost their lives fighting the Strand Theater fire and their families. As we honor these men, we should also remember and honor all those who answered the bell that night. Present Arms Captain John F. Carroll, Ladder Company 3 Lieutenant Raymond A. Mitchell, Engine Company 4 Firefighter Matthew E. McGeary, Ladder Company 3 Firefighter Roy A. McCarrigan, Squad A. Firefighter Dennis P. Murphy, Squad A. Firefighter William J. Murphy, Squad A. Firefighter Daniel C. O'Brien, Squad A. Firefighter George A. Collins, Engine Company 1. Firefighter Frederick F. Kelly, Engine Company 1. Firefighter Martin E. Lipper, Engine Company 1. Firefighter Henry E. Sullivan, Engine Company 1. Firefighter John M. McNeil, Ladder Company 1. Firefighter Bartholomew Hurley, Ladder Company 1.
I'd also like to make note that the lone chair in the front here that we leave every year for Chief Burrell, who fought at the fire on March 10, 1941, rests with his hat in memory of him. I'd also like to thank the Brockton Fire Honor Guard, the Brockton Police Honor Guard, and the Brockton Firefighters Pipes and Drums. I'd also like to especially thank retired Chief Galligan and the Brock members of the Brockton Fire Museum for the display in the rotunda. Uh, without these gentlemen, our history be, would be lost. Thank you. At this time, I would like to ask Father, uh, Reverend McCoy for the closing prayer. Let us pray. We pause again, O oh God, to give you thanks for those who serve you, those who work to protect and preserve life, giving of themselves, even sacrificing their lives for those entrusted to their care. We give thanks for those who gave their lives on the night of the Strand Fire. And Lord, we count it an honor to follow in their proud legacy of courage and duty fulfilled. May we in our time and in the work we do, work to do much the same, so to serve you. Bless the families of these men, bless their followers, all of us, in the fire services, law enforcement, those who hold public office, first responders everywhere. And Lord, bless the men and women of our armed forces and their families, wherever they may be. Defend them with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in their trials and temptations. Grant them courage always and a sense of your abiding nearness, wherever they may be. We pray, O oh God, that you would continue to bless all of us as we do the work we are called to do in your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Reverend. And again, I would like to especially thank the family members of those that were lost on March 10th for being here today and to let you know that we'll never forget. I now ask you to please stand for the retreat of colors.
present. Oh. Oh, man, man. 